Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness Podcast. And today's such a special day because one, it is the hundredth episode. And two, I brought in my absolute most special guest. His name is Larry. Larry Michael, aka the Love Shepherd, if you guys don't know, is actually my personal love energetics coach. This is somebody that has been in my relationship for about eight years years. He is the founder of the Institute of Genetic Energetics and the fouranswers.com. He's a master ERP, love restoration coach, a certified tantric practitioner, a speaker, a producer, a poet, an author. Are you guys, this man is just absolutely amazing. You're going to absolutely love our topic as we come in and talk about how your love is inextinguishable. It's really that simple. So I'm welcome to introduce Larry. Let's get started. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. So what really stood out to me, Larry, is one, obviously, you're not only an author, but on top of that, you are an energetics coach working with individuals to be able to have them understand each other. And I would say it's probably been about seven, eight years now that we've been working with each other. And I just have to tell you, it's been the most remarkable experience being able to have a third party in our relationship. Because as there's so much emotions going into a relationship, how beautiful it is to have somebody that's very sensible and just understanding the opposites of what their opinions or their emotions and just understanding that whole thing has been absolutely magnificent and being able to have people come into my life and say, oh, I'm struggling. I don't know what's going on. And I say, I have the perfect guy for you because he just really makes sense on the masculine and the feminine side and being able to find that harmonious balance. So one thing that really stood out to me the most is when you were talking about love and you were like redefining love or almost like you said, I'm going to just say, you said love is shitless. And I thought, what is this guy talking about? He's a loves coach. He's made me feel the most love in my life with the love of my life. It's just, it's been so funny how you said that. So when, when I say that, what comes up for you when love is shitless? Oh gosh. Well, you know, my nickname, my playa name is love shepherd, right? So I am all about love. And that path, since I was a little kid, was like trying, working it, understanding it. Like, I really wanted to figure it out the best I could. And needless to say, I see a lot of people that are like very wounded and hurt and um, constrained and fearful around love. As much as I see people that are just magnanimous, they're magnificent, they're, you know, they they glow, they inspire all of us. But that last set is a smaller set compared to the people that get very challenged by it. And I'm mm-hmm. going, okay, what is the deal with this word? So I started researching and I, you know, I've looked at love for a long, long time. And you know, this is the first time we first started talking is that to me, love only exists in the present, right? It's only in the present that, you know, what you experienced in the past that old saying that, you know, the past is history, the future is a mystery, all there is is the present or the now is so accurate. And it's very true when it comes to love. But we have an experience in the past, good or bad, and we want to have that happen in the present. So we bring that into the present as if that same exact thing can happen again. Nothing works that way. The universe doesn't work that way. What's happening now is it might be minutely different or it may be hugely different, but it will never be the same as the past. And then the other thing we do is like we project into the future. Like if I do this for you or I've had the experience, this is what I want in my future. That's what we're aiming for, attempting to live the future, which is impossible, but a lot of people attempt it nonetheless. Then in, in both cases, we're not tuned into love, right? So to begin with, love only happens right now which means if you try to put a definition on it, you're going to be wrong, right? You can't define it. And and then I go, okay, well, if we can't define it, then what the heck is it? And what really became so true to me, and this is even reading through scriptures, through wise books, just 
everything I could to understand it over the, the years. And they keep saying the same thing that really love, first of all, is inside us, right? That term self-love, unconditional love is not unconditional to other people. It's unconditionally loving ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so if it if it's inside us, what's really motivating us? What's pushing us as human beings. So I will say this, love, and you can disagree, love is a life force. It is our life force. Every person listening to this, look at you got up this morning, you took a breath, you did the most unconditionally loving thing you could possibly do. You chose life. You're listening now. You're still choosing life. You're still breathing. That is love. You are never without it. It might feel broken or damaged or imposed upon or edgy sometimes, but it is always there. Mm -hmm. So basically this is saying, if you're looking for love, stop. Stop because you are love. You don't have to look. You don't have to put any any extra effort into it. it. It's as easy as breathing because that is your life force. Thank you so much for sharing that. And for those that are listening, like, oh my gosh, right? (laughs) Immediately what happened to me is I just went immediately present. Like that's where Larry took me is just so present and just being able to connect to that love. I don't know if you guys were able to feel that, but boom, that hit me. And why that speaks so true to me, Larry, I heard this in the last couple of months that if you go into the art of manifesting and you want love, you actually going into the art of wanting And so I love that you actually took us to a place of, no, we are. And so instead of manifesting of the wanting, go into the place of that you already have that. And that actually will attract more to you when you're in that center of like frequency, instead of the wanting, it actually puts it outside of you. And how profound is it of something outside of you versus into you? What comes up for you there? Okay. So want is a really fascinating word to work with. I mean, we want lots of things. I want to have a good breakfast this morning. I want a great hug sometime today. You know, I want to spend time with my dog. I have lots of wants. And then I have bigger wants. And you spoke about manifesting. So there's a piece that really is key that must be accompanied with a want. And that's intention. The the art of manifestation does not work just flat out does not work without intention. We have to have a solid intention. And if we don't feel worthy, if we don't feel like we deserve or are capable of something, then that intention won't happen. Right? And, and most people, when they're not feeling worthy or even worse, they're not feeling significant. That's that point that they're breathing, but they're not even aware of their breath, Mm -hmm. right? There's not an appreciation for the life that's here. There's not an appreciation for the choice that we make. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the choice to be here, right? Now, there's some people that that choose differently, that's a path that for many reasons and complexities they go on. But look, at we're surrounded by living human beings and a lot of us allow ourselves to go into deep pain and turmoil. Mm-hmm. And that deep pain and turmoil comes from conclusion and judgment, right? It's not inquiry, it's looking at a situation and determining this is the way it is, judging ourselves or someone else and determining this is the way it is. It's shame, blame, guilt, resentment, all of those things and going, that's the way it is. And that's constricting, right? Yeah. And you're... We don't need to be there. There, There is an easy out. <laughs> there is an easy out. I, I teach a class called Simplifying Complexity, right? And Hell yes, we're in a very complex world, right? There is like plenty of things to create stress and anxiety and and just challenge, Mm -hmm. you know, and and those challenges, some of them are difficult, but they're all meaningful. 
And so how do we simplify that? We simplify that with inquiry. We simplify that by asking why and not because we're after a specific answer, but because we're open to the surprise of discovery. Hmm. And, and, and there is no other way. Look, at you, you go out there to, to work out. I mean, look at what the women who listen to this, men and women both who are listening to this, you know, there's a decision. I want to look better. I want to feel better. I want to be healthier. I want to be more vibrant. I want to be able to look in the mirror and go, oh, yes, right? So, but do you know exactly what that is that you're sculpting? No, you know the feeling. And you, and are you you kind of like, there's a, a feeling that you want, but I don't know a single person that I've ever talked to that hasn't moved through a transition in their health and in their body that doesn't at that point where you say, did you ever think it could be like this? And their answer is, I had no idea, mm. right? Because it is a grand, magnificent surprise what we're capable of creating. Body, image, health, all of those things. And we get to that surprise not by so tightly defining it, but by allowing ourselves to be an inquiry and out of our shit, if you will. I appreciate that you were explaining the simplicity of the complex because those that are listening right now, can you just hear the knowledge that's just coming? I mean, every time I have call, calls with him, that's that one on one connection. It allows these like, amazing aha moments to break through because we are so complex, but what's so great about it is you make it so simple and you have really simple ways, but I want to hear Larry is, do you have an example of how you've been able to utilize this with the people that you work with or in your own life? Let's say you're having an upheaval. You're having a, a conflict, if you will, with your child or your beloved or a parent or your landlord, mm -hmm. the weights that you're trying to pick up are, they seem to be fighting back. The first thing we do is like, ah, oh, it's so hard. That's a judgment, right? Or a conclusion. And, and instantly at that moment, the thing to do is ask, what is really happening here? You know, what does this mean to me? So we assign beliefs and meanings to things. Mm -hmm. and. We need to look at those so that we can overcome obstacles and challenges, or we can take on challenges courageously and enjoy them, right? Like, I believe that if a big challenge comes up, it's like, oh, man, someone wants me to really learn something here, and I must be fighting it because it wouldn't be so huge and, and challenging otherwise, right? I believe that turnaround is that everything that happens to us happens for a reason and a purpose, and it serves us. It always serves us. But the only way we get to the service of it, the gratitude of it, is to be an inquiry. Mm -hmm. And how difficult is it to ask a question? Someone says something to you and it immediately is off-putting. What was the last time someone said something to you and you went, oh, you SOB, or how dare you, or you know, whatever the case might be, and you just reacted? Versus, versus said, wow, I'm curious, when you said that, what was your intention? Or what did you mean by that? I want to make sure I understand you. I'm curious, why is this so upsetting to you? Mm -hmm. This is so easy, right? But the curiosity, look, at it, it takes a child's mind. We've all got it. We, when we were kids, we did all kinds of things. We didn't conclude and judge. We were just figuring it out, right? And, and we were plenty happy most of the time. <laughs> now as adults, we still need to have that child's mind, which allows us to hear things that we don't anticipate or expect, but are hugely informative. Yeah, I, I want it on this topic because I love it so much. It has helped me tremendously in my relationship with you, Larry, because before I would judge, I would assume, and I would quickly take offense to it and personalize it. But what you've taught me is that inquiry of where did that come from or what's really going on? And that alone, that inquiry has allowed a more vulnerable place for him to express like, yeah, I'm, I'm really going through something right now. Oh, 
oh, okay. And then it allows to realize that instead of taking something that's so per like personalizing it, making it my problem and then our problem, and then now it's a whole catastrophe, that inquiry allows that that person's having an experience and that you're, you're coming at a place of gentleness and kindness of being like, doesn't seem like that's really you what's really going on. And that tremendously has been a big breakthrough. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. There's not a day really that goes by that doesn't throw something at us, mm -hmm. right? Little to large. And the little things, little bumps, we kind of make it through those. We usually do pretty good. You can ask yourself at the end of the day, how'd I do? Um, I did good. Or mm, mm, not so good, right? <laughs> the bigger pieces, we just have to ask that question. And we could ask it of ourselves. Why am I feeling this way? What do I have to believe to hold on to this particular angst right now? And let yourself get an answer, right? And then go, is that true? Is that even my belief? <laughs> right? And that's what you do for yourself. And then someone else is like, wow, I, I mean, I'm surprised because I'm not sure. I, I, I know I don't fully understand where you're coming from and I want to, right? Like, look, at the, the, there's a reality. If, if something triggers us or upsets us, really triggers us or upsets us, the, the indication there immediately is that whoever is doing that, they're important, right? You might not think they're important because if the reality is if they weren't important, you would just go, who cares? Someone honks a horn at you when you're driving down the road. Who knows? Maybe they slipped on their horn. Whatever. You just keep driving and you don't let that horn ruin your day. So many things that happen around us that we pay no attention to. The things that we pay attention to are happening because there's something for us to learn, engage wow. from it. You're right? right. It doesn't mean that you should go into everything and go, yay, hurrah. I'm going to just go into this really challenging, bumpy, yucky situation. No, that's not kind of a, a want, but it may be the reality of what we're dealing with. So what's our choice? Be pissed off, conclude, judge, blame, and have a very difficult time resolving it, or be an inquiry, which is where the only place we're going to find joy is in that inquiry space. And ultimately, we need our lives to be joyful so we can emerge and grow. Mm. Right? It's not so hard to get there. Not as hard as most people think. What comes up for me is the unknowns, right? The unknowns is so scary, I think, for the brain or the mind to go to because it's unknown. And when it's an unknown territory or it's something where we've never been, it's pretty terrifying. So what would be that first step into the unknowns to be like, it's unknown, it's scary? I mean, you talked about curiosity, right? So is that the first step? You go into it with curiosity first? Yeah, courage and curiosity both, right? So... Fear is, is the great dismantler, right? It's, it destroys massively most things, right? Now, in some case, fear can, could be a warning. Don't go down. An explosion just went off down the street. Maybe it's not a good idea to go down there, right? But if we're steeped in our fear, if, if we take it any further than just a warning and we start living it, then we start to destroy and dismantle. Mm -hmm. And inquiry gets us out of that. Right? And the unknown, really, the reality is anything that hasn't happened yet is unknown to you. How are you dealing with this all day long? There's all kinds of unknowns. You don't know walking down the street if you're going to trip or not, if you're going to take a left step first or a right step first most of the time. Mm -hmm. Known is everywhere, mm -hmm. right? So... How do we just handle the unknown normally? Well, we're being very courageous. We're going off in a place of discovery. We're in inquiry. And everything, we can look at it as painful and damaging, or we can look at it as a surprise that's going to be the precursor to some wonderful growth or evolution. Back to your work, right? Back to the working on our bodies. That's just this incredible, that's, we're emerging. This is evolving. We're evolving into a, a healthier, different looking, different feeling self, right? How exciting is that? I don't know if and it takes courage. 
Yeah. I don't know if you guys are listening and hearing, but Larry has a very expansive feeling about him. And that is when you're really connected to your alignment, where fear is a very contracting and and shrinking type, this expansive and this, this, all of the ideas, and they just are so sensible. You guys can hear it's just so much truth and so much expansiveness that if you're feeling small and you've been living your life like this, Larry has such brilliant ways to really allow herself to go into this sense of discovering creativity. And so share with us, Larry, you've been writing some books and you're writing one right now, but tell us what has been going on with this being an author for you and what's coming up. Wow. I do a lot of writing and um, I have discovered that like I write for your tango, you know, we've talked about that and other online magazines and I can take a subject matter and I get really good at like, okay, tune in on it. Let's address that. Let's unpack it. Let's figure out how to turn this into something that's valuable, not just to think about, but to live. Right. That doesn't seem to be a challenge, but I have three different books I've been working on for years. I'm probably the perfect candidate for someone that needs a book coach, an author coach. But on the flip side, I'm pretty clear right now what has been in the way. And for me, I'm a perfectionist. And genetic energetics, what we are energetically, and the characteristics that are defined there. I mean, it's a huge part of how even what I believe and how I live right now becomes so possible. And I can be so passionate about it. In that profiling system, I'm a perfectionist. So I have this, I'm a true seeker, but I have this core wound, which is not feeling good enough. So I can second guess things. Now a book, I want the book to like change lives. I want, I want the book to be spectacular. I want it to be unique. A wounded perfectionist doesn't even see themselves as unique. I got over that one. <laughs> Fortunately, there's all these things I want in the book. And I also want it to be engaging from the first word all the way to the ending, where you can set it down like you just watched the coolest movie, right? So I have really high expectations on what I'm writing. I have to work with those, I have to dance with those every day. There's three, but we haven't had any published, is what you're saying. So we're parts we're definitely- of parts of them, parts of them have been published in stories. Right? Okay. But the but the whole work, um, the continuous piece. And and I'm also doing something that's very different because the book that I'm working on right now is both fiction and nonfiction. Ooh. Wow. So okay. AI. That's kind of is that fiction or nonfiction hmm. that we're dealing with with a with AI right now. Interesting. And, and the truth is it's both combined. And we have to be able to look at those things. So there's there are truths like I I could sit here and speak about love being your life force. Now, do I have years and years of science that proves that that's true? I can tell you absolutely not. Are there some different scientific studies, even for genetic energetics, that will demonstrate that the frequencies that we vibrate at impact each other? Mm-hmm. Um, the science is not as extensive as I'd love, but the science is there. So if I'm going to speak something and I want it to be a truth, I also need to be able now to say to someone, this is my truth. And this is the result of that. Try it on, Mm. try it on. And I invite everybody, by the way, no matter whether there's hard science around something or not, to really ask yourself, is this a truth? Do I know enough about this circumstance to be discerning, to make a good decision? Hmm. So as an author, I want to provide as much as I can so that the reader can be discerning. I don't want them to follow me because I said, follow me. Well, I certainly want them to be inspired, right? I may tell a story that they're, that this is exciting going, this is cool. I never thought of it that way. Ultimately, I want you to follow your own inner truth. That's, a, that's the expectation I put on what I'm communicating. The part of the perfectionist, obviously, is so amazing and magnificent because you're going to have such a high expectation for yourself. And so there's a part of our perfectionist that is amazing. And then a part of us that it's our Achilles heel, right? And so being able to learn within that balance, but 
what I can humbly and honestly say is that you have made my mind think so differently and so outside of the box that it's been in and how fascinating that is to going to be to your readers to read that and go, wow, because you've changed my life just by doing that. And so all the others that you will automatically will change their lives. So don't even think of, oh, I want it to change people's lives. It already is. <laughs> okay. So it already is. But what we want to do, Larry, I want to bring you back on. And I want you, your number one goal is to be able to finish the book. And so when you finish that book, I have to bring you back on. We have to know the title, the name of it. We need this book in our life. So as you guys can already hear, Larry is so complex, but also makes it super simple. And that is genius, you guys. That is the most genius thing, like the most art form you can possibly get to. That complexity, his experience, meeting with all these individuals about all everything from business to love to fitness, whatever it is in their life, and being able to take something that's so complex, but making it simple so we can think differently and being okay to go into those fears or those unknowns or being curious and, and courageous wow these are so big Larry so big thank you <laughs> would you thank come you. back on when you finish your book would you be willing to say you're going to come back on and do this oh absolutely absolutely and you just kind of give me an impetus to get it done faster <laughs> that's like, that's what we want right you guys are you guys ready for yeah this book? yeah yeah I am. so you, you call me next week and go are you done yet <laughs> <laughs> I need your book right here <laughs> I love it. Is there anything that you would like to close with anybody that's listening right here that you just have a feeling that you just would like to express to those that are listening? Yeah. Take a deep breath. And this time when you breathe, feel, really feel how that air that you're bringing into your body is revitalizing, adding vitality and energy, really divine purpose through your entire body right know that imagine you you take a breath and it's not just going into your lungs your lungs are then filtering out to your hands your heart your feet your body your neck the top of your head your eyes all of these are alive with love mm -hmm. right this is that force that's within you go do life from that if it gets really hard, there's nothing that's more powerful to bring us back than breathing. And not quick breaths, but just big breaths. Take them in. If you haven't done breath work, go do that. There's lots of fun ways to do that. Never stop breathing. Always know that every human being is significant. You are significant. There's a purpose. That's why you're here. You might not know what it is. You don't need to necessarily know but you need to live. You guys know why? So I brought him on. He's so powerful. I have goosebumps everywhere. Larry, you are, oh, you're amazing. You're, you already know you're just so amazing. And just thank you so much for being here. I, I need you. I have to have you more on these podcasts. So finish that book. I'm going to be messaging you and thank you for your time today. And for sharing that message of breathing and I know it will impact lives. I absolutely know I get messages all the time from it. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbell. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. You have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals. Booty Bands and Barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated. After being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, I said, that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.